is Denise Randolph. And I'm the Chief of Staff for the Department of Navy's Office of Small Business Programs. We are pleased to have you here again with us today to conclude our, our workshop that we are using to ready the, um, the workforce or the, the industrial base um, to, to take part in the closure of Red Hill. Um, without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started. I'd like to introduce you to Rear Admiral Jeff Killian, who is the commander of the uh, Naval Facilities Command Pacific. Uh, Com uh, Admiral Killian, please, sir, over to you. Thanks, Denise. Appreciate it. Aloha and good morning to everyone. Thank you for participating in this uh, webinar today. My name is Rear Admiral Jeff Killian. I'm the commander of Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command Pacific, headquartered here in Honolulu, Hawaii. I'm also dual-hatted, or I have a second job as the United States Pacific Fleet Civil Engineer. NAFAC is the Navy's primary contracting agent for facilities construction repair, repair and maintenance, and also for a variety of environmental functions. Uh, so I truly appreciate the opportunity uh, to speak on behalf of NAFAC Pacific this mor morning at this forum. NAFAC Pacific is committed to providing maximum opportunity to our nation's small business community to participate in acquisitions as prime contractors and subcontractors. This year to date, NAVFAC Pacific's small business program has spent nearly $1.3 billion on a variety of contracts. NAVFAC Pacific and our subordinate commands have a committed small business team of 20 formally appointed small business professionals located at points of execution across our 28 plus field offices in the Pacific area of operations. The small business team works with our technical counterparts to ensure small business opportunities are set aside appropriately for NAVFAC's wide array of products and services, including base operating support, construction, environmental and expeditionary efforts. Our small business representatives are actively involved in reviewing market research results to ensure our small businesses are given appropriate consideration, working closely with our technical teams to map out acquisition strategies that include small businesses. NAFAC recognizes the innovation, agility, and diversity small businesses offer and how they are pivotal to our national security and will continue to expand how we engage with small businesses. Our small business team will continue to participate in outreach events, and we're able to hold one-on-one -on -one capabilities briefings with any small businesses. So in other words, if you have questions, ask them. Our professionals are standing by to assist with any questions you may have. No question is too small, no question is too big. Our folks are eager to engage with the small business community to provide information in order to expand opportunities uh, for your niche in the economy. It's very important to us we value it. We've had many, many years of great service with our small business contractors. And so I encourage all of you uh, to give us a call to contact our, our uh, professionals and see if we, if we can help assist with any questions that you may have. I'd like to go ahead and turn the presentation over now to Jamie Degal, who is my designated small business professional here at NAFAC Pacific. She will go into further details of our small business program. So for everyone across the globe, Welcome, thank you much, and as they say in Hawaii, mahalo. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral Killian, and good morning to all of you joining us online. My name is Jamie Nagao, and I am the new Deputy Director for the Office of Small Business Programs at NAFAC Pacific. Today, I'll be sharing with you a little about who NAFAC is, what we procure, and some resources you may utilize to ensure you are ready to do business with the federal government. Next slide, please. The Naval Facilities Engineering Systems Command, or NAFAC, is a Naval Shore and Expeditionary Systems Command that plans, builds, and maintains sustainable facilities delivers environmental utilities and other base services, and acquires and manages expeditionary combat force systems and equipment. NAFAC Pacific provides engineering and acquisition expertise to the U.S. Pacific Fleet by serving as the Navy's facilities, installation, 
and contingency engineers in the Pacific area of responsibility. NAVFAC Pacific delivers best value engineering and acquisition services through our seven facilities engineering commands, NAVFAC Hawaii, NAVFAC Marianas, NAVFAC Far East, NAVFAC Northwest, NAVFAC Southwest, Officer in Charge of Construction, or OICC China Lake, and OICC Marine Corps Marianas. NAVFAC Pacific's skilled and experienced professionals provide planning, design, and construction of shore facilities for all military departments and for other federal agencies. To serve our clients, NAVFAC Pacific is organized into distinct business lines, asset management, capital improvements, environmental, public works, real estate, and theater engagement. Next slide, please. This slide highlights the various products and services we procure in support of our various business lines. These products and services include, but are not limited to, facilities planning, real estate, design repair and construction, environmental compliance and restoration, facilities operations and sustainment, utilities and energy management, shore anti-terrorism force protection, base relocation and closure, public-private venture housing, ocean facilities engineering, specialized technical services, contingency support, and expeditionary equipment. NAVFAC Pacific is an engineer DOD construction agent in the following countries, which may provide insight into possible contractual places of performance. Australia, Thailand, Philippines, Vietnam, Indonesia, Diego Garcia, Federated States of Micronesia, Republic of the Marshall Islands, Nepal, Bangladesh, Cambodia, and Timor-Leste. Next slide, please. Displayed on this slide are the top 10 NAICS codes utilized by the NAVFAC Enterprise in fiscal year 2021. If you're interested in NAVFAC Pacific's top 10 NAICS code, in fiscal year 2021, it can be found on the NAVFAC Office of Small Business Programs website under Regional Opportunities. The web address for the NAVFAC Office of Small Business Programs website will be provided at the end of this presentation. Next slide, please. The federal government spends trillions of dollars each fiscal year. So how can you position your business to compete for the available dollars? you must first identify your target market. Federal contracting offices do not buy everything. They typically specialize in the procurement of supplies and services within specific business sectors. Therefore, to identify what agencies are procuring the supplies and services your company offers, you can use the data and information extracted from the Federal Procurement Data System Next Generation, or FPDSNG, and on the USA Spending website. Once you have identified the agencies procuring the supplies and services your company offers, you will be able to reach out to the small business professionals within the agencies to conduct capability briefings or through matchmaking events, as well as monitor sound.gov for available procurement information posted by these agencies. Next slide, please. If you're wondering how to get started, visit the Systems for Award Management or SAM website at sam.gov. On this website, you will be able to register to do business with the US government, update, renew, or check the status of your entity registration, search for assistance listings, wage determinations, contract opportunities, and contract data reports, and access publicly available award data via data extracts and system accounts. I'd like to highlight the contract opportunities section of sound.gov. Here you'll be able to find postings for sources sought, requests for information, solicitations, special notices, justifications, and award notices. To locate NAVFAC Pacific opportunities, use the keyword or filter your search using our DODAP, N62742. 
You can do the same for NAVVEC Hawaii, inputting N62478. Next slide, please. You may be wondering what we do in the NAVVEC Office of Small Business Programs. As a small business professional, we are responsible for leading the acquisition workforce to maximize small business opportunities and achieve success in the agencies and commands small business programs. We perform a wide range of functions that include, but are not limited to, market research, formulation of acquisition strategies, acting as subject matter experts on socioeconomic programs, performing advocacy and outreach, providing business advice to small business owners and entrepreneurs, and other activities related to growing the small business industrial base. Next slide, please. This slide provides you with NAFEC's small business prime targets and our achievements in fiscal year 2021. As you can see, NAFEC Pacific exceeded all of its targets for small business and in various socioeconomic small business categories. Overall, NAFAC Pacific awarded $1.87 billion in prime contracts to small business concerns. NAFAC Pacific is committed to providing maximum opportunity to our country's small business community to participate in acquisitions as prime contractors and subcontractors. By exceeding our small business targets, we hope we are in commitment. Next slide, please. This slide provides you with NAFAC Pacific's small business prime targets for fiscal year 2022. As of mid-July, NAFAC Pacific has awarded $1.33 billion, or 46.47% of our prime contracts to small business concerns. Next slide, please. Here are a few useful websites for you to visit to learn more about NAVFAC. On NAVFAC's Office of Small Business Programs website, you will find information regarding our past and current small business contracting achievements, lists of current contracts that you may engage with for subcontracting and supplier opportunities, and information regarding the various socioeconomic small business categories. Also on the NAVFAC's Office of Small Business Programs website, you will find a link to NAVFAC's acquisition strategies and forecasts. United States Code Title 15, Section 637 requires NAVFAC to prepare a forecast of expected contract opportunities of the next and succeeding fiscal years and make this forecast available to small businesses. The forecast is for informal marketing purposes only. It does not constitute a specific offer of commitment by NAFAC to fund, in whole or in part, the opportunities referenced. The listing provided is not all-inclusive and is subject to change. See sound.gov for actual solicitations. Also provided are the links to the NAFAC Pacific and NAFAC Hawaii websites to learn more about each organization. Next slide, please. As I conclude this briefing, please feel free to reach out to the NAFAC small business professionals with any questions if you'd like to, or if you'd like to schedule a capabilities briefing. Again, I am the Deputy Director for Small Business at NAFAC Pacific, and Mr. Tony Anderson is the Assistant Deputy Director for Small Business at NAFAC Hawaii. Our contact information is displayed on this slide, and our phone numbers are listed on various public websites such as NAFAC's Office of Small Business Programs webpage. Last slide, please. I thank you for your attention during this brief, and I'll open the floor to any questions or comments for the remainder of NAFAC's allotted time. I do have Ms. Bianca Henderson, the Director of Small Business at NAFAC Headquarters Online, who can also assist in addressing your questions or comments. Thank you. So uh, to the participants that are online, much like we did yesterday, if you will drop any questions that you have uh, for Jamie or Bianca into the Q&A chat, 
we'll be happy to get those to them to address. So we'll give you a moment to type any questions you have into the Q&A uh, and we will address them there um, at that time. We'll just give them a moment to type any questions they have. Meanwhile, um, our PAO has uh, deposited the briefing that Jamie just provided into the, the chat for anybody who may want to download that. And I'll be providing some administrative remarks here in a moment. Um, Jamie, the question came in that says, are there any meet and greets in the near future? Uh, there are no formal meet and greets scheduled at this time, uh, but they can certainly, any company can certainly reach out and we can schedule one-on-one -on -one capability briefings. Thank you for that. The next question says, does NAFAC lease properties? I'm not sure of that answer. I'm, I'm not sure if, Bianca, you know the answer to um, that. that or... may, yeah, under... Um our real estate asset group. So that's a question. I'm not sure if they lease particular properties. That's something that we can um, address. If they can shoot me that email, I'll, I'll jot the question out and I'll respond back to um, Denise with the answer. Just to Not confirm. a problem. Um, the next one, so there, that question has been answered. The next one says, will Ms. Henderson and Ms. Nagao's contact information be provided? That information for Ms. Nagao and um, and Tony were provided in the brief that was just dropped in there. Um, but the points of contact for um, all of the Red Hill folks are actually found on the Red Hill site in the points of contact, as well as the information for each of the different commands you can navigate to through um, our website as well, so that you'll be able to get to all of the small business directors of, of which Ms. Uh, Henderson is one. So yes, that information is on the publicly available website and it is in the briefs that were provided. Um, the next question says, what is the rough schedule of expenditures for Red Hill related projects? As we indicated yesterday, uh, we will not be discussing any specific Red Hill requirements because we do not yet know them. So at the time that that information is known, uh, we will provide it out uh, in the normal, usual, and general fashion. But at this particular time, we're trying to focus on ensuring that the industrial base across uh, both Hawaii and anywhere else will, uh, is, a, is ready to react and respond to the requirements when they are known. Um, the next question says, is there a list of products and services by demand listed by highest demand, so NAFAC slash DOD? You want me to take that question? <laughs> I can take that question. Um, no, if the best place would be the LRAP. We don't have like a, we don't maintain a formal list of requirements like that. So the best paid place to for upcoming requirements would be um, our LRAF, as Jamie mentioned. And we just updated our LRAF in June. But as Denise discussed yesterday, we, you know, are subject to change and we'll be um, adding additional information to the LRAF as instructed by um, the Navy office. Thank you, ma'am, for that. Mm -hmm. um, it says, will the recording be made available later? Um, so uh, I will go into all of that when I do the general comments once we finish here. So I will address that later. Uh, and it says, what is an LRAF, please? Can you provide a web link? Yes, it's on our website. Um, Jamie, did you provide the NAFAX so website? LRAF is the long range acquisition forecast. So it is a forecast that each command, each of our 10 buying activities provides um, to the, oh, I'm sorry, I saw something pop in, to the public to advertise its requirements coming up. The requirements are usually posted from a three month window out uh, as far as three years out that would enable industry to be able to you know, plan which requirements that they want to respond to and to enable enough time if teaming is necessary. So that's what an LRAP is. Um, as Jamie pointed out, 
Um, it is on their website. Uh, and as I indicated yesterday in my brief, you can actually get to LRAFs, all of the LRAFs for all 10 of our buying activities through our website. So we will be going through that information again uh, in a moment. Uh, in terms of wh whether or not the briefs are gonna be provided, the short answer is yes, and I'll go into some administrative comments that address all of that in a minute. Yes, if I may add, Denise, they can always Google NAFAC Small Business and the LRAF will pop up on our website. It's on our host page. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. That's true for all of them. So um, it says, um, thank you for the information. Do you utilize a leasing strategy for your equipment acquisitions? So I'm gonna answer that for you if you'd like me to. Um, <laughs> leasing is always uh, an opportunity when contracting officers do a make or buy assessment, when we are actually doing market research. Um, so it really depends on the equipment and the strategy that the government feels is in its best interest. Leasing is not uh, forbidden within the Department of the Navy. So it is something that um, depending again, on what the, the equipment is and the procurement strategy, um, the, 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 the life of the asset that we're talking about. So all of the different things that you would consider when you're doing your market research, determining how you're gonna meet a requirement uh, would be on the table for any of the program offices uh, that would acquire um, any of these types of products. You're welcome, Mr. Knowles. Okay, I don't see any other questions, Jamie and, um, and Bianca. Thank you all very much. We appreciate that. Um, I'll take over from here. Normally, I would do um, our comments first thing when we come on, uh, but we wanted to accommodate the, the Admiral who, uh, who wanted to spend some time with you all, uh, but had some folks waiting, but he did not want to give up the opportunity to speak with you. So in terms of administrative comments, um, certainly, as each of you all joined the conference, you indicated um, and were acknowledged that this, this was going to be recorded. We do record these sessions, and we will be making this recording available probably uh, by the end of next week. We normally say about three to five days. Um, our PAO goes through and takes care of uh, the editing, you know, if there's any choppiness, if there's uh, anything that needs to be edited, and then we send it forward to uh, the folks that post it on our website. So that usually is about a three to five day turnaround. So we fully anticipate that this recording will be on the Red Hill section of our website. Um, uh, Ms. White, do you mind dropping in the link to our website into the chat so that they can navigate through that if you would, please? Um, the questions and answered, if not answered, uh, will be addressed uh, in a document that again will be posted on the Red Hill section of our uh, Don OSPP small business website. So that will also be there. For the rest of the questions that are located here, we'll hold those uh, in chat. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and go to our next presentation because we actually have folks standing by uh, to, to kick this off. I'm uh, very pleased to have the Naval Supply Systems Command uh, represented here. Captain Sean Triggs is with us. He is the commanding officer of FLC Pearl Harbor. So Captain Triggs, thank you for joining us this afternoon. I'll turn it over to you. Well, thank you, Denise, and uh, aloha and good morning. Uh, as Denise said, my name's Captain Sean Triggs. I'm the commanding officer of the local NAVSUP entity here in Hawaii. My command, NAVSUP Fleet Logistics Center Pearl Harbor's mission is to provide logistics solutions throughout the Indo-Pacific region uh, to generate and sustain readiness for the operational force. Uh, to do this, we deliver supply chain management, contracting, transportation, uh, defense fuel products, uh, and worldwide movement of personal property to Navy and other services throughout the Indo-Pacific region. My command's contracting office awards a significant number of our region's contracts to small businesses. Uh, just this year alone, by dollar value, nearly two thirds of the contracts we have awarded were to small businesses. And so uh, I, I would highly encourage uh, after this webinar, if you, if you have any further questions about uh, dealing with us directly, please don't hesitate to reach out. 
Uh, you can find additional information uh, working with Fleet Logistics Center Pearl Harbor by Googling uh, FLCPH and then OSBP. So it's Fleet Logistics Center Pearl Harbor Office of Small Business. Um, uh, at this time, what I'd like to do is uh, go ahead and turn over the floor to Mr. Christopher Espenshade. Uh, he's the small business director for NAVS, for the NAVSUP enterprise, uh, and he's going to discuss how to do business with NAVSUP. But I, I do want to thank everyone, say mahalo, for joining this webinar and uh, for the interest in supporting our local military forces. Uh, without further ado, I'll turn over to Mr. Espen Shea. All right. Thank you, Captain Triggs. Hopefully I'm coming through all right and everyone can see me. Um, again, welcome. Uh, you know, I appreciate Department of Navy Small Business for, for putting this uh, event together and inviting Naval Supply Systems Command to be a part of uh, the conversation. Uh, as Captain Triggs had said, we, we have a large presence there on island and uh, utilize small business to a you know, pretty big extent. So again, appreciate the time here um, and I'll wait. Hopefully uh, we have some slides coming up here in a second. Okay. All right. Um, again, as Captain Triggs had said, I'm Chris Espenshade. I'm the Director of Small Business Programs here at the Naval Supply Systems Command. Uh, next slide. So I uh, just want to kind of give the folks online a little bit of appreciation for what we do as an enterprise, uh, what kind of what makes us unique, both from a mission standpoint, uh, but then also from a procure procurement standpoint. Um, you know, what what's unique there at uh, FLC Pearl Harbor, and then uh, how best to do business with, uh, with NAVSUP. And I believe hopefully I'll be joined a little bit later uh, with our assistant commander, uh, for contracting Mr. Mark Bennington. So uh, when he jumps on the line, hopefully he'll be available if there's any questions afterwards uh, at the conclusion of my brief. So uh, just generally, just to talk a little bit about NAVSUP and our mission. So the mission of NAVSUP is, is uh, you know, pretty succinct with delivering sustained global logistics and quality life support uh, to the Navy and the Joint Warfighter. And so the NAVSUP Supply Corps team uh, does that through uh, over 25,000 uh, military and civilian workforce members uh, worldwide uh, that you know provide unparalleled products and services for the uh, worldwide global logistics mission. Uh, so most of our uh, mission is really set in 50% uh, at NAVSUP weapon system support, and then about uh, another 50%, close to 50% at our eight fleet logistics centers that are located worldwide. And so I'll start a little bit about NAVSUP weapon system support. So uh, NAVSUP WSS uh, sustains the Navy supply system uh, by managing program office support, as well as item management support for over 430,000 uh, uh, national stock Itemed uh, weapon system material. Uh, you know they also support uh, program office support for foreign military sales, uh, hazmat transportation, distribution, and stock positioning efforts, uh, as well as coordination with our fleet logistics centers. And so our fleet logistics centers, uh, the main purpose. Uh, and mission behind those is to provide waterfront logistics operations. So that includes uh, uh, fuel, pr uh, providing fuel to the fleet, hazmat, warehousing services, local procurement, uh, and then the quality of life. So household go goods, personal property moves, um, you know, postal operations, and then food service management. Um, in addition to our FLCs, we also have NAFSA Business System Center. So. NAVSUP Business System Center is really the IT arm behind the Navy's global logistics in uh, supporting the development and sustainment for a number of logistics uh, software systems to include uh, ERP, STARS, uh, food service management, our ordinance support through OIS, uh, and then uh, supporting the household goods movements through the PPTAS uh, software system. Uh, additionally, another another unique mission that NAVSUP has is Navy Exchange Command. So Navy Exchange Command oversees 100 Navy exchanges uh, worldwide to include also 39 Navy lodges, uh, the Ship Store Program, the Uniform Program Management Office, the Navy Clothing and Textile Research and uh, Telecommunications Program Office. Uh, so we have a really broad, uh, unique mission for the Navy. Next slide, please. 
So in addition to our, our standard logistics, assigned logistics functions, uh, Navy Marine Corps acquisition regulation also designates us as the procurement authority for any Navy entity that doesn't have their own unique authority. So in result, um, what happens is we execute over 43% of the Navy's actions. Uh, and then we delegate over uh, to over 600 field offices, NAVSUP procurement authority. So we have a very broad procurement mission that again is worldwide. And so we're positioned at our fleet logistics centers, as well as uh, some other num a number of other sites in which we've delegated authority to. Uh, from a small business office, we have over 25 small business professionals uh, and that's growing, it seems by the month. And so um, there's, you know, as far as the HCA, there's 10 major buying commands that the majority of those contracting actions are procured through. And so our small business, our dedicated small business professionals uh, on site support uh, uh, the small business program through uh, the responsibilities that are outlined within SECNAV 4380.9. Um, locally at FLC Pearl Harbor, we have an excellent deputy director of small business programs, Mr. Ryan Kanda, uh, who recently replaced uh, Mr. Hayden Hu, who a, a number of the folks on the line may be familiar with. Uh, Ryan's a, an excellent asset uh, on island there for Hawaiian organizations um, and is really well versed within procurement authority uh, procurement regulation, and then also engage with the local industry. So uh, more information about how to contact Ryan will be uh, as part of this brief. Next slide. So it wouldn't be a brief without bragging a little bit. So um, FY21 was a record year for NAVSUP. Not only did we uh, meet and exceed all five small business targets, we had um, historical milestones that were set in small business, we executed over $2 billion to small business, uh, the vendor community, as well as small disadvantage, close to $800 million. Uh, women owned, uh, over $500 million went to women owned small business. And then HubZone, which is uh, historically, you know, a challenge for a lot of uh, DOD and federal agencies. Uh, we obligated over $84 million to HubZones. Um, you know, what What's kind of unique about NAVSUP is uh, the majority of our spend, about $757 million of our small business spend, went to knowledge-based services. And a lot of the, that contracting is done and procured through our Fleet Logistics Center procurement offices. Um, and then followed behind that would be medical services. So $376 million went to medical services. What I'd like to note going forward, um, what's different from FY21 to FY22 is a lot of that medical services uh, procurement mission has now transitioned over to Defense Health Agency. So um, if you are in the medical services uh, world, maybe consider uh, engaging with DHA about how you can support that mission going forward. And then $170 million of small business spend when the sustainment s and &E. um, So of course, you know, there's a, there's a lot of support there for weapon system support, mostly on the maritime side, we do have, uh, you know, a lot of great small business vendors within aviation as well. Um, something I'd like to point out that I, I think is really good uh, practice that NAVSUP does is not only do we look at what is the percentage of, of total obligations going to small business, but we also look at it from a perspective of the one each. So, um, you know, 27% of our small business uh 27% of our total obligations went to small business, but 33% of our actions went to small business. So, um, you know, we feel passionate about uh, each and every action that comes through as a procurement and, and seeing how we can leverage the small business advantage. And uh, I'm really excited that we, we continue to have more engagements with industry through virtual and in-person, uh, you know, platforms as we kind of come out of this, this COVID pandemic. Uh, next slide. So this slide is really talking about some key points in doing business with NAVSUP, but I would I would also say that this is key points that you need to keep in mind when dealing really with any defense uh, DOD agency. And, uh, you know, number one is research what the activity buys. So the upfront homework, there's a lot of uh, publicly available uh, federal procurement data um, that you can pull directly off SAM.gov. Uh, but also Department of Navy Small Business has done a good job of refining that down to if you want to support Navy Marine Corps procurements, you can go on Department of Navy Office of Small Business webpage 
and you can filter through all of the procurement data um, you know, for the last couple of years to really kind of strategize who you want to engage with, who, uh, who procures the, uh, the services of supplies uh, that you support. Um, additionally, and where I think this is really unique to DOD is, um, look, we, we fully believe that small business provides an advantage uh, that large business rarely can match both an in innovation uh, speed, but also, um, you know, really care for the mission. So I think it's important when you engage with uh, any small business uh, personnel or any contracting personnel or customers for that matter, is it always has to be through the lens of uh, this is how I can meet your mission by either uh, improving, you know, speed, uh, cost, or just overall improvement in uh, you know, the end item that you're providing to that customer. Um, again, our highest priority is meeting the mission uh, beyond meeting small business goals. Uh, you know, they're just really a, a symptom of doing the right thing. So again, everything is through a meeting mission as our highest priority. Um, the other thing is make sure when you're engaging, you know, I think it's really important the first time you engage with the command is to come through their small business office. And so, um, you know, speak through the lens of my capability and expertise can help you support, you know, either this past requirement that we've had or uh, upcoming requirement. And as was said earlier, you can find those on the long range acquisition forecast uh, that both Department of Navy Office of Small Business has on their website, as well as our local uh, web page. Um, you know, I guess Second, the last point is really if you're new to, uh, you know, federal procurement or DOD procurement is uh, be absolutely upfront and honest about your, your capabilities. Um, you know, don't jump into a, a really big requirement off the bat uh, if you don't have, you know, really good expectation that you can meet and exceed expectations because uh, especially within DOD, past performance is everything going forward. Uh, so it's really important uh, that you be open and honest about what you can do for us. Uh, and then last but not least, uh, the Procurement Technical Assistance Centers are a, you know outstanding resource for any small business, uh, both the folks that are starting out, but um, you know folks that have been in the space for a while. Uh, usually, it's it's a free resource, and if it is, if there is a fee, it's it's very nominal. So I really suggest that you leverage the PTAX because um, it's outstanding. Next slide. Okay, so specific to NAVSUP, um, you know, if you're interested in, in working with NAVSUP, you know, really step one is, is to learn more about what we do and express your interest on our webpage. We have an outstanding portal that captures interested vendor uh, data. And so that data is available to all of our customers and our contracting personnel uh, for when they're doing their, their uh, market research before a requirement goes out, goes out in solicitation, uh, not only to identify if there's any small businesses that have expressed interest in doing it, but also to see what is the potential for doing a small business set aside. Uh, and so that, that information is really important, uh, but it's also important because uh, up until, you know, we've developed this, it, we've been, you know, paper copy capability statements that have been sent in through a PDF or they've been handed to us personally. And so we felt really passionate about being able to capture that data and uh, leverage it better down the road. So um, I highly employ you if, if you're interested in supporting NAVSUP, uh, or want to learn more about NASSUP, go on our webpage. Um, if we buy the types of services and, and supplies that you support, uh, please, by all means, uh, submit your interest within our NASSUP Interested Vendor Portal. I believe at the moment we have over 800 small businesses in the portal uh, right now. So uh, every person that goes in there is, is another win for small business and, and looking for targeted set-asides. Next uh, slide. Okay, so um, in terms of what does NAVSUP buy, uh, we have six years worth of awarded uh, procurement data available on our website. Uh, so step one would of course be go to uh, the NAVSUP Business Opportunities webpage um, to get to the procurement data and the long range acquisition forecast, you would go to what NAVSUP buys and then there's some arrows there of course, uh, you know, 
guiding you to the awarded data and then the long range acquisition forecast. So our long range acquisition forecasts and, and most Navy forecasts are required to be updated by uh, 20 June of every year. We just recently updated us ours in uh, early June uh, and have expanded that list to over 130 uh, anticipated requirements. And we're uh, periodically updating that on a, at least a quarterly basis. So we anticipate adding uh, a, a number of other requirements as they become known. Um, something I, I also would like to mention for, for folks' awareness is uh, you know, the majority of our requirements are exercised on behalf of external customers. So external being uh, non-NAVSUP agencies or uh, commands uh, that we support. So, uh, you know, we support Fleet Forces Command, uh, US PAC Fleet, as well as uh, a number of uh, customers within the Beltway uh, and, um, and some of the other folks that don't have procurement authority. And uh, I think the final slide here is if you have any, uh, any questions that you think of after today's session, or going forward, uh, my information's there. Uh, you know, my email as well as our local FLC Pearl Harbor Small Business Director, Mr. Ryan Kanda. Uh, so that concludes my brief uh, for today. I'm not sure if Mr. Bankton has joined us. He or has not. not. He okay. he's, he asked for a little bit of time, so we'll try to get him on a little Perfect. later this afternoon. I do know that. Mr. Powers is on and is ready to go. But before you go, there were a, quest a couple questions that came into chat that look like they might be towards you. I will ask the audience because after um, the Hawaii PTAC goes, we will be rolling right into our question and answer session. So if you do have um, questions for any of the presenters, either today or yesterday, mm -hmm. please feel free to go ahead and drop them in the Q&A session the section, excuse me, and we will go ahead and address those uh, once we actually uh, finish with the Hawaii PTAC. But while you were talking, uh, Mr. Esmanshade, a couple questions came in. So I'm going to go ahead. I think some of these were directed to you. Others are a little more general. So we'll, we'll start. So it says, how would a small business offer specialized services where there are no opportunities in SAM.gov? Well, so again, I would say go back and research uh, what opportunities uh, have been previously procured from Department of Navy. Engage once you've once you've identified who it is is the the procuring HC, head of contracting uh, activity. Go and reach out to their small business director. Um, that's the that's the first uh, line of communication I think is that should be utilized. Have an engagement with them. Uh, they will likely be able to connect you with a customer, um, and then the and then the communication will continue from then on. Um, and then the other thing is, I know there are, you know there's a million opportunities that come out on spam.gov, and even when you put filters out there, uh, you know you sometimes overlook them. Uh, that's why, again, I think it's really important that you spend some time and uh, reach out to the small business directors at the Navy and, and, and any DOD agency just to let them know that you're there and that you're looking to support upcoming requirements. And that kind of keeps them, uh, keeps you uh, in the back of their mind to make sure that when a requirement comes forward, that, hey, have you done a distribution of this company that expressed interest, those sorts of things. Not a problem. Thank you very much for that. Um, and that answer actually goes across the board for all 10 of the buying activities. Uh, one of the other pieces is obviously to look at the LRAFs, uh, the long range acquisition forecasts. Yeah. Um, they won't always have some of the smaller opportunities, but out on our website is a description of what each of the activities buys um, by command and then the small business director's contact information so that you can reach out to them. So there's no such thing as oversaturating the small business professionals. So just because you've reached out to one does not mean you should not reach out to the other nine as well. So um, so the, the next one, um, I believe this came in for um, NAFAC, um, but it says, we are a specialty contractor and considered a large business. However, we are a wholly owned ANC. Can our clients who are general contractors claim small business points even though we are a large business? If so, how may they present that to their clients? I'm not sure that I, those two things, I feel like they mixed a couple of concepts there and it might just be terminology, 
Mm -hmm. Um, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold that because I believe our NAFAC people will be back on when we do our general question and answer session. So we'll come back and try to address that then. It says an anonymous attendee, so they did not identify who was submitting it. So I'm not sure who to ask to go in and try to provide some clarification. So Denise, I guess the only thing I would add is um, the way the question's phrased, I would interpret it as, you know, your the general contractors in which you're subcontracting to claim small business points. So they would not, um, from your contract, it would only be under subcontracted um, dollars, and, which of course is still important. So that's really where that small business spend would be considered. Uh, the other, the one thing I, I don't, no one's asked yet, but what I want to clarify a little bit about uh, NAFAC had, had previously presented and then, uh, you know, NAFSUP, sometimes there's confusion about mission there. And so uh, NAFAC traditionally is in the engineering and construction type of requirements, whereas NAFSUP is more on the uh, consulting type. Consulting, can you kind of clarify that a little bit? You all have unique contracting responsibilities. So I don't recall consulting being there for NAFAC. Can you help with that a little bit? Yeah, I was saying, so uh, general construction, engineering uh, types of requirements would be would go through NAVFAC, whereas, uh, you know, third party consulting, those sorts of, uh, you know, professional service types of contracts would be supported likely through NAVSUP. Okay, thank you for that. Um, and so the, there's a question that says, what's the best way to set up a capabilities briefing from industry? So mm-hmm. I think you've answered that question, as have the others, about you know figuring out who the right organization is and reaching out to their small business director. They'll be able to, to have that happen for you. So that, that's going to be the answer across the board. Um, and there's a question that says, are there any opportunities in the Tonga Island in the Pacific? Yeah, I think I saw that one come in a little bit earlier uh, on NAFAC, but uh, I can certainly get back uh, some information specific to uh, Tonga as to what NAVSUP procurements are out there, um, as well as is probably NAVFAC. So we'll, we'll coordinate a response on that. And I, I actually believe, you know, and part of the presentation that I gave yesterday and kind of teaching them to fish for themselves, you can actually use the SAM.gov website and do a filter on that. So I would strongly recommend, and this is just across the board for all businesses, um, as has been indicated uh, when the Admiral spoke earlier, our small business offices are very, very, very small staffs. And so much of the work before you go to them, you need to go ahead and do a little bit of the legwork yourself. So um, looking for opportunities in specific areas, you can actually go to the SAM.gov website down that left-hand side and do a search for opportunities in specific places. Uh, You can also go to our OSBP website and look to see what opportunities have actually been procured in those areas before. I do believe, Chris, you all have a very similar opportunity um, on your website to look at the things that NAF uh, SUP has procured in the past. Um, So uh, there's just a lot of opportunities if you're looking for something specific for you to do a little bit of legwork to figure that out. And then... um, there's a last question and it, it says, is there an email signup list for NAFSUP so that we can also receive this information? Yeah, so there's um, by email signup, you can submit through the NAFSUP interested vendor uh, portal. We have all those emails and any, any information that goes out that's unique uh, that will be updated on the website, we will send out uh, to the distribution of all the email addresses, but um, all the information will be readily available on our website. And and to Denise's point, um, we made our website look a lot like the Department of Navy Office of Small Business Programs for uh, uniformity. Uh, so f- so folks know how to uh, to go around the website and find the information that they need. Thank you for that. Um, so I'll throw this to you. Our company is presently in a mentor protege relationship with another small 8A company. Do you have set-asides for business relationships like this? 
Uh, so that we do not have a unique uh, set aside, and there is no unique set asides for Mentor Proje 8A. Uh, now there is uh, set asides for 8A contractors um, through uh, small disadvantaged business. So we would set it aside for 8A uh, companies. Hopefully that answers your question. But not and for we Mentor do. Protege specifically, right? So Mentor Protege Correct. does not entitle you to any specific set asides, I believe is what you said. Correct. Yeah. And you could support through the 8A that you're, uh, that you're being mentored by. And that's, that's one of the main points of the program too. So typically an 8A wouldn't be a mentor, right? So part of the mentor protege program is it's a large business with very, very few exceptions. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, well, it depends on if it's uh, which mentor protege program, if it's the SBAs or if it's the DODs, because uh, there is some changes there. Um, so this will be a good opportunity because our mentor protege um, webinar is actually tomorrow. So just kind of a quick plug that if, if that is something that you're interested in finding out more about, we will certainly follow up on this question. But uh, if, if you are interested in the mentor protege program, that webinar is happening tomorrow. You can register for that right on our homepage. Um, so there's a question about specific Red Hill. I'm not going to read that again because I've continued to say we're not going to address any specific Red Hill requirements. Uh, if there says, if part of a mentor protege and the protege is 8A, would they still be able to go after these opportunities? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm not sure what opportunities they're talking about, but uh, I don't know if this is the yeah, I mean, really any opportunities. Though. So yeah. Uh, so, okay, we'll hold that there and see if there can be some clarification provided later. So um, I still don't see that, um, that Mr. Uh, Bennington has joined us. So without further ado, uh, if the Hawaii PTAC is ready, I'm going to go ahead and introduce Mr. Bruce Powers, who is the program manager of the Hawaii uh, Procure Procurement Technical Assistance Center. So Mr. Powers, over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Denise, um, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, uh, participate in this program. Thanks for the Department of the Navy and also uh, uh, the small business uh, uh, people here. Uh, I'm Bruce Powers. I'm the program manager for Hawaii PTAC. Um, so I'll get started here. The um, There we go. A little history lesson. lesson. Uh, 2008, uh, the feds uh, awarded uh, um, the first PTAC contact, contract uh, in Hawaii. It's now a cooperative agreement funded in part by the Department of Defense, DLA, and the Research Corporation of the University of Hawaii. I'll, through this cooperative agreement, PTAC continues to provide free services uh, there are over uh, 90 PTACs across the nation. Um, and this, this website that's here is, is a uh, uh, association of PTACs, which is a large group of all the PTACs, including the, uh, the territories, Guam, Virgin Islands, and Puerto Rico. And they form a national network of procurement professionals. So what we do is, uh, give agencies uh, and contractors an understanding of government procurement requirements. Uh, that's not an easy task, but that's one of the, that's the goals. Uh, guidance of how to evaluate and respond to solicitations. Now, solicitations don't always come in, this, in the firm in the way that we are usually think of them. There are other solicitations that other people have mentioned, uh, sources sought and things like that. So we give the, uh, which is sources sought are really important uh, pieces of uh, uh, our solicit because that's actually the government doing uh, market research. And if you're a business and capable of doing the work, then you don't respond, that's, that's not good. You need to respond to it, and we and if any there are any questions about those, we can also answer those. Help uh, to perform on government contracts. Once you get the contract, now what? So we can provide help with the uh, 
administration of the contract, modifications, uh, wide area workflow, those kinds of things that keep the contract running on a day to day basis. The last thing on here that's not on here is the probably the most important thing for the state of Hawaii is that awarding business contracts to Hawaii businesses keeps money in Hawaii. Uh, and that makes everybody over here, including me, happy. Okay. Oh, okay. Wasn't expecting that one. Uh, what to expect from, uh, from, well, all right, free individual business. Everything we do is free. Registration and certifications. Um, we have a, a registration is, is an issue right now. I don't know if anybody knows, but there's a, there's a problem getting in and, and registering in sam.gov uh, a lot of the i have one person that does nothing but help contractors get in and register in sam.gov uh, i'm not sure what the problem is and i'm sure they're going to work it out but i think that the recent uh, elimination of the duns and also moving fpds over to sam.gov is kind of jammed up the works i know it'll it'll get out uh it'll be work itself out but if you have a proposal sitting on a contracting officer's desk and you uh, don't have can't register in SAM, you got a problem. So they're they're working it out. I know that the uh, the contracting officers are all aware of this, and uh, they're they're trying to uh, figure out what the solution is. Certifications uh, those are for the socioeconomic uh, status. Those are done. Um, a little bit easier and because SBA is does most of them uh, they're they're really good and pretty quick with it and uh, we have a, a resource partners that do uh, help with a certification especially in the women's own small business se section which has changed uh, significantly recently capability statements uh, that's been brought up earlier, thanks to uh, the NAF sub guys and the uh, uh, NAF FAC actually brought it up. Capability statements is just a one sheet piece of paper that has your firm's capability on it, which is really a heck of a lot better than a business card. And for all those meetings that you go, when you go to and you read uh, a small business person at each one of the contracting agencies, this is really handy. Uh, this tells as much as you can about the, the your business and what you can do, and you leave it with them, and, and it's there. And it's easily changed if your if your status changes. Um, we have bid matching services, which is a function of DLA and the program that we have internally that matches keywords from mostly your capability statements or other keywords. And it matches um, solicitations in Hawaii for uh, not only federal, but state and local governments. The, in the training for, uh, we, give, we give training, we have uh, three, um, we, two to three trainings a month uh, that we sponsor. And we also, uh, hop on uh, Small Business Administration and other uh, resource partners training. Uh, and it's on our, and it's on our website, uh, what, what's coming up There's always. And tr so and the networking issue is getting cut, is, is sort of getting back to uh, some speed, but uh, we haven't done much of that, mostly because of uh, COVID. Uh, matchmaking events. Uh, these are really important. We've done a couple of these, and I think the Navy has one coming up here pretty soon, too, uh, for a, a dry dock. Uh, uh, I think it's an AFAC that's doing it. Uh, but uh, this is where that capability statement comes in. you got an up-to-date capability statement, and you have a matchmaking event. This is pretty much will suffice for your intro. Uh,
Why isn't this thing a blazes? I'm sorry, I can't get my next slide up. Bruce, if you'd like us to, there you go. There you go, there you go, that's it. Thank you, appreciate it. Uh, I wonder if I open up this thing, it becomes, there we go, okay. Resource partners. Um, these are the people that we have uh, uh, arrangements with uh, that uh, supply things that, that PTAC cannot. We have a, through our cooperative agreement, we deal with uh, award and uh, servicing of contracts um, and procurement. Uh, we don't get into uh, management issues uh, finance issues or anything else. Uh, so these people, these resource partners do. Uh, Minority Business Development Center and Enterprising Women of Color, uh, they deal, they're really, really good locally with our uh, uh, women-owned business certifications. I mean, they, uh, when we have issues with that, what's any issues whatsoever, we always refer clients to, to them. They also do technical and management assistance for startup businesses. Uh, this is a really uh, uh, nice uh, group of people and, and talented, and they're down at the local YWCA, and um, it, it's a, a really good partner to have uh, for um, expertise. The Hawaii Small Business Development Center, uh, we... The PTAC shares an office with SBDC, and they do business advisory services, financial plans, um, with, uh, business plans, and the key one is financing. They have uh, very good contacts with the local banks and also uh, mainland banks. Uh, this is a, uh, if, if we have any issues, if a, if a uh, contractor has any issues with the, these services, we can re always refer them to uh, Small Business Development Center, SBDC. They're, they're really fantastic, especially with a financing issue. They, they, they really know their stuff on that. And of course, the SBA. Uh, the a SBA has uh, experts in each one of those fields listed. Uh, it's a, uh, um, uh, they, uh, they're, it provides the certifications, all except for service disabled uh, veteran owned business, but or veteran owned, uh, they they don't do the certification. The VA does that, but the rest of them they do. Uh, they have experts on each one of these, uh, and they give out good advice. And there's there's education issues, and training. Uh, the the training is key because not only do we, the PTAC, push out. Uh, SBA training, but we also take the training from SBA as part of our professional development and keeping us up to speed on on, uh, on some of these things. And and as people change in an organization, we find out who's uh, a new person there. Uh, it's uh, the local office is is very good with that. Okay, the uh, uh, last one is Cyber Hawaii. Uh, the um, I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna turn it over to her in a minute. Uh, I'll have one two more slides and then I'm then I'm finished. To Raylian Barakan, there we go. Uh, contact information for me. That's uh, the program manager. There's my uh, email and my phone number. Next slide, if you can. There we go. Okay, that's. Hawaii. Uh, th that's our website. Hi, uh, the Hawaii Pacific. Uh, uh, procurement Technical Assistance Center. But what I was going to say, there's, an, there's another association is it, uh, called the Association of PTACs, APTAC, A-P-T-A-C dot org. Uh, they are our, our progress, our, our, the, the content, and they offer training and they, uh, and uh, so, uh, yeah, that's the one. Thank you. I'm not going to use that last one. So uh, the um, 
they are really, uh, really a good organization that is, uh, we rely on them heavily for uh, information that comes uh, from uh, on contracting, information that comes from uh, DLA, and it, it goes, they know it first, and, and their website is really slick. It's, it's not, it doesn't take a long time to go through, and you can find out it's, a, it's a, about a 5,000 foot level about PTAX. Uh, it's very entertaining and it's very well written. I, uh, I spend at least two, three times a week on that website trying to pick up new stuff. Uh, and, and you don't have to log in. You don't have to be special or anything. You just It's www.aptac.org. Uh, it's different. Anyways, all right. Uh, and without further ado, I'm going to return it over to um, uh, Raylian. Barakan, who's a, a cyber coach with Cyber Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you so much, Bruce. Um, aloha, everyone. My name is Raylan Batakan. I am a cyber coach for the Cyber Ready Hawaii program. Um, it is funded by the states um, and it is put together in partnership with the Cyber Readiness Institute. Um, so, a little bit about me. I've been um, assisting Cyber Hawaii as a cyber coach um, by supporting small, medium-sized businesses and nonprofits uh, through the Cyber Ready Hawaii program. Um, okay, and a little bit about Cyber Hawaii. Um, it's an affiliate of Cyber USA and is founded in 2016. It is an information sharing analysis nonprofit. Um, aiming to put together these kinds of programs to help the uh, Hawaii community to be cyber um, ready. Okay, um, so the Cyber Ready Hawaii program um, aims to train these small, medium sized businesses and nonprofits in cyber readiness. And through this program, we define it as taking practical steps. So the steps that employees can do now uh, within their jobs. Uh, to prevent cyber attacks by focusing on human behavior. Uh, because cybersecurity is caused by human error, uh, the program focuses um, its first steps into training the workforce and focusing it around people. Um, so these trainings will be focused around what we consider the four core cyber issues, which are passwords, software updates, phishing and USBs and removable media, as well as knowing what to do if an incident occurs. So throughout the program, you'll learn about these four core cyber issues, developing policies around them, as well as developing an incident response plan uh, to know how to prepare, respond, and recover from a cyber incident. So how do we do this? Uh, we start by introducing a cyber ready culture. Uh, with the goal of, again, embedding cyber readiness into how people do their jobs. Um, so what I mean by how people do their jobs is things that they can do now. So if they're checking their email, one uh, practical step they can do as part of phishing is to check who the sender is, making sure that you're expecting that from someone um, and to not click on any suspicious links. So knowing where those links are coming from. So how do we reach this goal? Uh, first is people. People are the key. Again, cyber, secure, cyber incidents are caused by human behavior. So bringing the awareness um, and creating a training program for these employees to know how to prepare, respond, and recover to a cyber incident. Um, next is the process. So as part of the training, um, adding cybersecurity and how they do their jobs. Again, um, back to my phishing um, example, is taking these steps in checking who the sender is, making sure not to click on any links. Um, and next is the technology portion. Um, so utilizing technology to enhance your cybersecurity. Uh, so these are softwares like antivirus, firewalls, um, and going back to the four core cyber issues of software updates is knowing that these software, these technologies are there to help prevent uh, cybersecurity incidents. Okay. Um, and to the program itself. Um, so 
we appoint a cyber leader in your company. Um, and this cyber leader can really be anyone. Um, I've helped folks who are CEOs or presidents of their company um, to assistants, to folks who are in human resources. Uh, because again, cyber incidents occur because of human behavior. Um, having the person, having the cyber leader um, doesn't necessarily have to be the IT person. It doesn't have to be someone who is extremely technical. Um, going back again to our goal is helping people do their jobs is um, we recommend someone to be the cyber leader who understands the roles of um, everyone in the company. Um, so again, uh, we recommend someone who um, knows um, what everyone's roles are. Um, so we recommend that being the um, human resources um, person. They do really well in this um, position. Uh, so next, the cyber leader completes the online cyber readiness program. So again, the cyber readiness program is developed by the Cyber Readiness Institute. Um, they provide free tools um, to anyone related to cybersecurity. So you can actually view this uh, program online and it's completely free. Um, but the benefit of going through the program um, and the cyber readiness program is that you have a cyber coach, someone like me to help and guide you and support you throughout the program. Um, so throughout the program, uh, we'll complete a playbook. So this playbook contains uh, policies around cyber readiness, so the four core cyber issues, uh, developing an incident response plan, again, how you can prepare, respond, and recover from a cyber incident, and then implement training to your workforce. So this is the, the training and awareness piece for your employees um, to know how they can embed cyber readiness into their jobs. Um, then after the playbook and the training is complete, you'll receive a Cyber Readiness Institute Cyber Hawaii Certificate. Um, and our last portion of the program is assisting these small, medium-sized businesses and nonprofits uh, through a um, Federal Acquisition Regulations 52.204-21 uh, planning tool assessment. Um, again, this program is free. Um, the FAR 52 planning tool assessment is really just um, an assessment to see whether or not folks meet, are in progress, or don't currently meet the 15 controls related to cybersecurity. Um, and I think for everyone here, they're familiar with the um, FAR 52 controls um, kind of um, extracted from the NIST requirements. Um, and then um, if folks who are interested in pursuing these federal contracts um, and uh, pursuing the CMMC level one, uh, we also have a program that we can connect uh, these businesses to. Um, okay, and I think, uh, this, so this is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much. Uh, for folks interested in uh, learning more about the Cyber Ready Hawaii program, you can go to cyberhawaii.org. Uh, forward slash cyber dash readiness. And if anyone has any questions related to the program, um, I'll be here for the Q&A section. And you may also email me um, at raylan.patakan at cyberhawaii.org. Thank you. Thank you very much, Raylan and Mr. Powers for your presentations. Um, what I'm going to do, because we are a little bit ahead of schedule, um, I'm gonna just ask for, it's, it's about a quarter till four, uh, and we were supposed to start the Q&A session at 4.20. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take about a five-minute pause here uh, to allow people to go ahead and type any questions that they may have into the Q&A, um, run to the bathroom or whatever. I know it's after lunchtime for many of us. Uh, and then we will reconvene here in five minutes for the Q&A session. So by my clock, Eastern Standard Time, let's just say right at 3.50 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, we will convene back here to begin the question and answer session. But for all of you all who have joined us, please feel free to start dropping any questions you have in the Q&A. And if there's any particular presenter who you have your question directed toward, please include their name and or command, and we'll make sure that that person has the first opportunity to answer them. 
So five minutes, we'll see everybody back here to start the Q&A at 3.50 Eastern Standard. We have about one minute until we start our Q&A responses. Okay, so I have 350. Um, and so um, Raylan, I am gonna start with you. So if you know, uh, all of our presenters can kind of come back on camera as we go through our Q&A session, 
I would appreciate it. But Raylan, I'm going to start with you because there were a couple of questions that I'm sure are directed to you. So the first one is, would you be able to make a presentation to our firm concerning CMMC? We have implemented cybersecurity, CMMC handbook, and have a high CMMC score, but we have not yet presented it formally to our staff. Thank you, Denise. Um, so I myself um, would not be able to do a presentation um, focused around CMMC. Um, I would be able to um, present on the Cyber Ready Hawaii program, although I can um, connect you folks with um, our partner uh, reference and the e-resilience program. Um, who we do pass over folks interested in obtaining CMMC level one um, with you folks. Thank you. Bruce, are you able to elaborate that? Do you all have anyone on your team that um, makes presentations on general CMMC or uh, should we refer them to our Project Spectrum website, which is a DOD resource? I would we we do have some uh, rudimentary uh, uh, capabilities in that aspect, uh, which we would uh, have, which is why uh, Cyber Hawaii is is part of our resource sponsor, which we we can shed more light on it if we need it. But also, I, I realize that Spectrum uh, thing is is a is a website to do it. I mean, it's this is going to be. Uh, um, we're just in the infancy of this, and it's going to get much, much bigger. Uh, so I guess this is a good idea to uh, work this uh, thing out, how how we're going to be able to supply that information. So at, at a stands right now, we can give some advice, and then we can uh, call on uh, Cyber Hawaii to give some more. But then there's some limitations on what we can do and what we can't do. And, and having the, the spectrum, yes, but you're right. I, I agree with what you said about the, the spectrum. Uh, okay, so what I would recommend, um, the Department of Defense has contracted with a company um, under a platform called Project Spectrum. Um, they are a free resource to all businesses, quite honestly, and they do provide a little more detailed resource to those who are performing under a mentor-protege agreement. However, they do have a website full of uh, information, uh, webinars. Um, I mean, it's it, it's just really, really a wealth of information that gets you not just uh, to understanding CMMC level one, but CMMC level two, as well as the changes that are being proposed. Um, uh, Ms. White just dropped the website into the chat. So for those of you who might be interested, can use that website and they, it's full of points of contact to be able to uh, be able to assist you there. Um, so it goes on, it, it asks, uh, can you elaborate on bid matching? Do you assist small businesses with modifications of RFPs to help match our capabilities with what the government really needs? And Mr. Powers, I believe that was a question to you. Yes, that's one of the, uh, the uh, services that we provide. We can take a look, need a copy of the solicitation uh, and... Um, you know the the request for proposal, and if they're when they sign up for as a client, we can we can help with that. Interpret some of that. Any questions that anybody has on an on an RFP, uh, we can uh, we can help with. That, that's that's different from the bid match thing. This is a, uh, a you're throwing your uh, information about your firm into a, a computer, and it's going to match what solicitation is sitting out there in the computer. So. But if they have, especially this, a, a specific solicitation, no, no question about it, we can help with that. Okay, excellent. And I do believe this one is one for you as well, sir. I am a resident of Hawaii and Guam is part of my territory. I contacted the PTAC rep on Guam and was told they are limited to helping Guam-based businesses. How do I work around that? You're Hawaii-based. If the company is a Hawaii-based business, we will help. Uh, the 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 issue we have that uh, often the way to become a Guam-based business is have some kind of office in, in Guam, which would help the the Guam PTAC. In lieu of that, the revenues that you obtain here in Hawaii 
uh, become uh, our issue uh, locally. So they're a Hawaii-based business. The, I'm, I'm not sure what the rules for the state is, but you can't, I'm assuming that they can't get uh, uh, revenues from Afghanistan, but the, uh, the um, and I'm just using that as an example, far out example, but I, I believe that the revenues from Guam, uh, if, if they're reporting the taxes on it, are, are, are allowable for uh, Hawaii based business. In other words, we can count that. But we can count, just because they're based in Hawaii, you can ask generic questions about contracts and anything that may or may not deal with Guam. I mean, I'm assuming that the business is here, <clears throat> so uh, they can uh, ask, ask those kind of questions that uh, uh, you know, the, the FAR is the FAR. It's as good, it's good out there as it is at, over here. So, Okay, so let me make sure I understand the, the answer that you provided. So if this person is a resident of Hawaii, they can come to you and ask generic questions. But if the business is based in Guam and the proceeds from the business are, are, are reported in Guam, then you all wouldn't do specific work with them, but you would do general work with them. Sure. And then they'd have, because they have to comply with the, the, the laws of Guam. Uh, it's like here, if you're in state, I mean, if you, you got people working here in state, you got to pay taxes, you got to do, you know, you got to confirm the state the laws of the state of Hawaii, it's same thing in Guam. Gotcha. So we'll okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to recommend that the submitter of that question uh, reach to our office because there's there's a couple of different things that are happening with that question. And I'm not really sure if what you're asking for assistance on has to do with opportunities in the contiguous United States, if you will. So if that would be the case, then uh, depending on what your question is, our small business directors that are located at the various commands with which you'd have an interest in those opportunities might be able to help you as well. So if you could email um, osbp.pao at navy.mil and provide a little bit, of, little bit more specificity with respect to your question, I wanna make sure that we got that right for you. Um, so then the next question, we're gonna go back to the mentor protege question. And it says, if a part of the mentor protege and the if this is a part of a mentor protege arrangement, and the protege is an 8A. So the protege is an 8A. So I'm assuming the mentor is a large business. Would they still be, at, be able to go after these opportunities? Now, I do believe that that was um, part of the previous mentor protege question. So when it comes to the mentor protege program, the, you, the mentor is typically for DOD. And as Chris very aptly pointed out, some of the rules change between the SBA's mentor protege and the DOD's mentor protege. So I'm only going to talk about the DOD's mentor protege program since that's who we're here representing today. So when it's a DOD uh, mentor protege um, agreement, uh, if in fact the mentor is a large business, the mentor would be the prime and they would be the one uh, who would be listed as the submitter of any particular uh, solicitation response. So therefore, they would need to qualify under whatever the, the provisions are of the procurement. So if it's set aside for small business and you are you're under a mentor-protege arrangement and the mentor is the prime and the mentor is large, you obviously would not qualify there under, um, under that particular set aside because it would be a large business. Again, um, there was a lot of moving parts with respect to that question. So if there's a, a more detailed question that can be provided with specificity, I again encourage you to submit that to osbp.pao at navy.mil. We'll make sure that we get that uh, fully answered for you. Uh, there's a, another question that says, are we eligible to receive assistance if we have an office in Hawaii, but our business is located legally incorporated in the mainland? You can get assistance, but not from uh, us. We're, we're uh, the PTAC. Uh, you can contact the PTAC office where your business is located, and, and they, they will give you the, the assistance. So we're, we're specifically limited to the state of Hawaii. 
So Bruce, the question was, and I apologize if I didn't, um, if I didn't get, this didn't come across. It says that they have an office in Hawaii. So their business is incorporated in the United States, in the contiguous United States. However, well, I guess Hawaii is part of that as well. So it, but, but in, in the states, in the lower states, um, but they do have an office in Hawaii. Would that make them eligible for assistance from your PTAC? I believe so. I, I, I don't, uh, uh, if it's registered in the state of Hawaii to do business, in other words, now you say it incorporated someplace else, but that doesn't mean you can be incorporated someplace else, but registered to do business in Hawaii. If you're registered to do business in Hawaii, then, then you're uh, eligible for our, our assistance. Okay. Thank you for that. Um, so I want to go back to a question um, that was asked and we, we kind of answered it, but I want to make sure that we got the complete answer. So it has to do with, and I'm scrolling, um, and it says, we are a specialty contractor and considered a large business. However, we are a wholly owned ANC. Can our clients who are general contractors claim small business points, even though we are a large business? So that was the question asked. And I noticed, and I'm going to put Miss Cindy Ridal on the spot, who is the um, chief of contracts for NAFAC. Miss Ridal, if you can um, unmute, please. And and there you go, ma'am. If you can answer, I'm going to get question. you for making me unmute and put on the camera. Sorry, yes, everybody. Yes. I have no idea what you're looking at. By my nose. <laughs> okay. So do you mind answering that question for us? Sure. I think, but, you know, again, to your point, uh, we were trying to figure it out ourselves, but I think unless they're a certified, by SBA certified 8A ANC, then they would not get credit. Um, they would get credit only as a large business if we awarded to them, assuming I understand correctly. Right. Um, just because they're owned by the ANC, if they don't have that certification, I, I don't know how we would be able to give credit when we go to award. That would okay. be my, that's my thought. Okay. That's, that's what I figured as well, but I don't play enough in that to know all of the nuances. Uh, we will follow back up. Thank you, Miss Riedel. I appreciate it. So I'm, I'm going to now find the mute button. Denise is like, okay, get off stage, Riedel, get off stage. All right. Bye. Thank you. Um, so uh, if there are any other questions, if you'll go ahead and drop them in the chat. Meanwhile, I see that our illustrious director has joined us. And sir, uh, thank you for coming on. I know that you're out teaching a class, uh, but I know you wanted to have an opportunity to address the audience one more time. Um, so while people are dropping their questions into the chat, if you want to go ahead and say a few words, I'm going to put you on the spot as well, sir. <laughs> well, thank you very much for putting me on the spot there, Ms. Denise Randolph. I appreciate that. I was, uh, I'm actually at the University of Virginia. We're teaching a government understanding industry course here. So I've been teaching uh, Navy professionals how to do business with our industry partners from the government side uh, during today. And uh, I was gonna hit the road two and a half hours of driving to get back to Washington, DC to get home. And uh, I stopped, I didn't get in the car. I was told Mr. Denise wants me online, so I'm here. <laughs> and I'm happy to be here. Uh, again, folks, we here are all supporting your needs, your interests, as we work to set ourselves up to do business with the Department of the Navy in particular, but federal government more broadly. I know you've heard from some great speakers today, and every single one of them are here and supported at one cause. Uh, had a text message conversation with the Secretary of the Navy last night, more than enthusiastic about the opportunity that we're doing here over the next three days, or a total three days in total. And uh, he was very excited to know that we're virtually interacting with you, showing you those opportunities that we, we are working on and talking about how to do business with the department. Um, to our PTACs, appreciate you, Bruce. Love the things that you do out in Hawaii, and we're going to be we're going to be knocking the doors down to your office with all the participation that's coming your way, especially from those there in Hawaii. And we look forward to growing those relationships. But folks, know right up front, we're here to support you. We're here to support the work that needs to be done for our warfighters. And we can't wait to offer those opportunities to engage 
and further those in. So I would uh, would be remiss if I didn't say the Secretary of the Navy is also very excited about your participation and opportunities that will present themselves here in the near future. Um, Ms. Denise, did you talk to them about the meeting that we're having next week by chance? Only very briefly, sir, if you'd like to address it from the senior's perspective, I'd appreciate that. Sure, thank you. Um, just to get, let you all know what's going on next week, we should have a study that's wrapped up next week that will dictate the full body of work that needs to be employed in order to shut down Red Hill, get on with the environmental remediation that needs to get done, and close out that effort successfully. Uh, that meeting, we're going to make sure that all of the work is comprehensive, it needs to be done in a successful manner, and then we'll work on the distribution of which major buying commands get that work. And then we want to further emphasize as the, the workflow and the opportunities that will exist from this uh, get filtered down such that small businesses have a fair share opportunity to participate in the work that we have in hand. So looking forward to that meeting, we're going to divide up the work, figure out who's doing what, and then requirements that you heard that we're not talking about yet will be able to flow from that kind of meeting that we're going to have here in the future. But again, full transparency, you know the body of work that needs to be done and all of its various pieces as they fall into areas of your domain. We hope you're ready. We hope you're ready to do business with us because this train will be moving and we want you on board and we want your support to help get it done. And we look forward to that engagement and whatever we can do to help you get closer to us with these opportunities, we're looking forward to fostering. So with that, Ms. Denise, uh, any other things you want me to highlight or uh, to further showcase? No, I really do appreciate you being here, sir. And to, to kind of pass along the secretary's continued commitment to small business. We know because we get to interact with him a little more uh, than most because he is uh, one of the I'm not sure if we had any other um, Secretary of the Navy's who have been former small business owners, but because he sat in the very chair that many of these folks occupy, he's aware of the challenges that are faced uh, in navigating through some of the hurdles that doing business with uh, the federal government um, can, can create. So he's very appreciative of the things that we're doing to try to help them uh, knock that down. Uh, and he's staying on top of us to, to hold us accountable for doing so. So thank you very much, sir, for everything that, that you're doing and for being here this afternoon. Appreciate that. All right. Thank you very much for, much for coordinating this three-day three -day event. This is outstanding. And uh, we'll, we'll talk about rewards later. Oh, I like that. Thank <laughs> you, sir. All right. <laughs> so thank you, sir. I appreciate that. We did have a couple more questions that, that dropped into the chat. Um, so the first one was, how do we register for the meeting that Mr. Smith just referenced? So the meeting that Mr. Smith just referenced, as he indicated, is for all of the senior folks within the, the uh, within DLA and DOD who have a hand in closing out the uh, Red Hill effort to do the environmental remedi remediation and then all of the subsequent activities that are necessary to shut Red Hill down. That meeting is for them. It's so that the government is actually going to get on one page so that when we start moving forward, we, more, we move forward in a very deliberative fashion. So that is a government only meeting that's going to be happening at the highest levels as they coordinate that. Um, that meeting, actually, Mr. Smith, I am going to need you to get home because that meeting is tomorrow afternoon. That is the third day of this, which is actually not for industry. So I'm going to need you to, to make that trip home pretty quickly, sir. Um, and so um, as Mr. Smith indicated, they are going to be coming together. Uh, this is the first of those meetings where they're going to each bring their individual pieces and understandings of what need to happen from each of the different perspectives. So there's going to have to be some gnawing on that. There's going to be some additional collaboration that I'm sure will take place. And then uh, we will continue to refine that until we have something to discuss um, in terms of what a, a, an actual opportunity will look like. So we don't expect that to happen right away. It takes a little bit of time when it, those, those things move through the appropriate levels. Um, but we do expect um, by the end of, of August, uh, when Ms. Washington and I come out there, that we may have a better understanding of what the timeline for that will be. We probably still won't have requirements, but we should have a timeline. And then when Mr. Smith is expected to come out at the end of September, we're hoping to have some definition to what some of those requirements will be. So I do expect um, that they will continue to be refined. Again, uh, they're going to only be identified uh, to, the, to the larger group 
with each of the individual government associations having their own. They'll start that identification tomorrow afternoon and then move forward. So the next question is, um, it says, uh, do all PTACs collaborate with other PTACs? Um, and is it federally funded program? And what, is, what does it cost to attend? And I'm adding a few words because this person is driving while they're, while they're talking. So Bruce, I'm gonna send that over to you. Do PTACs collaborate amongst each other? And are you all federally funded? The answer is yes to both. Uh, we collaborate uh, through, through that association that I mentioned, the association, uh, APTAC, Association of PTACs. Uh, uh, they have uh, training uh, every, every month and there's uh, all kinds of, the website is just full of best practices. Uh, on uh, on things happening around the globe, and it's a uh, 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 they're very up to date. And the the other one is that uh, what was the other question? The, it yes, said, it's well, federally it, it funded. If you're, right, if you're federally funded, yes, and yes they're all cost, federally you, funded. Everybody, yeah. are people able to attend any of the these programs? I'm assuming they're talking about the meetings that you asked about regarding the app tax. Yes, that if if you're part if you're a client of APTAC, I mean of, of of a PTAC, and you get invited, some of some of the meetings are are APTAC only, which is the PMs of all the, the PTACs. But there's a lot of training, and there's a lot of meetings that we have that are open to the public and through the PTAC. We can we push these events out through our website and through uh, 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 through our client base, we have a uh, be able to shout out like this one. We, we shouted that out through our, our client base. Uh, so yes, there, with the exceptions of the uh, uh, PTAC only uh, meetings, they're uh, liable to attend. They can attend, and, and of course, it's all it's always free. You, you, there's very little charges for for anything. So okay, thank you for that. Um, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, so I'm actually going to ask um, Ms. Arvis Washington, who is the deputy director of our office. She wanted to say a few words to you all in closing this out. But before she does that, I really do need to extend uh, my uh, sincere appreciation to each of the folks that you see pictured here, as well as their support staff. There's a couple of people who aren't pictured that were, pre that were presenters yesterday. I will tell you that as Mr. Smith indicated, this came about very, very quickly. It has been less than three weeks uh, from the time that we got the tasking uh, to, to put something like this on until we actually delivered this today. Um, so there might've been a little bit of choppiness and I do apologize for that, but I will tell you everybody came together to make sure that we started this conversation to prepare um, the specifically the Hawaiian industrial base, which is why we came together, but then the entire industrial base to support the uh, efforts in uh, beginning the, the shutdown, the orderly shutdown of Red Hill. Um, we have presented you a lot of information, um, which will be available. The video will be available in three to five days on the Red Hill website section of our um, secnav.navy.mil slash small business slash Red Hill page. Um, and uh, if there are any other questions that you all have that you just didn't get an opportunity to ask or that you thought of after the completion of this, I'm going to ask you to go ahead and submit those to um, the osbp.pao.navy.mil. All of this information is available on the point of contact page on Red Hill, uh, as well as the way to get in touch with all of the folks that have presented over these last couple of days. And then lastly, I cannot say that I, I could not have done this without Ms. Amber Donnelly, who is a, a support staffer to our office. She worked tirelessly. Amber, I'm gonna ask you to come off of, uh, cause I want, I want your face here. She worked very, very hard to make sure, thank you, Amber, to make sure that this came together so that you all um, could have this presentation here to, to get the, the website set up. So uh, what we, we could not do what we do um, without the folks supporting us, much like we cannot do what we do without you all um, being the, the contractors of the future for us. So we appreciate all of you, Amber. Thank you so very much for everything that you did. Miss Washington, without further ado, I turn it over to you to close this out. All right. Well, thank you, Denise. Thank you, everyone. 
um, for joining us today. I think this was a great initial uh, meeting that we will continue one of many that we will have. Um, you see, you've heard from a number of our small business uh, professionals, utilize them as a resource, utilize our website, Denise and Destiny and Amber, done a great job with um, highlighting Red Hill on the homepage of our website. So utilize that, utilize the uh, resources that you've met here today, including the PTAC and uh, the cyber coach. Uh, those will be important as you move forward and looking to do business with the Department of the Navy in this effort. So Denise, I think you've done a great job here. Thank you, ma'am. And we will close it out. Have a good one, everyone. Thank you.